Hey guys, Joe here. Today we're going to start revisiting my tiered gear system series from last year. I did very well. Uh, a lot of views, a lot of subscribers out of that. It was metrically good, but it wasn't my best work. I was right in the middle of a 9-10 month long respiratory illness. No joke, it was miserable. I could barely think straight, let alone talk, because I couldn't breathe. Uh, so I want to give this the attention to detail and quality that I wanted to in the first place. And also, enough has changed in the last year to where I really think it's worth updating what we talked about. So if you did watch last year's series, you're still going to get something out of this one. And if you didn't watch it, congratulations, you're getting a much better version of it now. This video is going to serve as an introduction to really kind of get the points across. What is a tiered gear system? How can it be beneficial? And kind of just talk about the basics that I want you to remember throughout each of the tiers so I don't have to repeat myself. Then we're going to do a video on each tier and then we're going to finish the end of the series by talking about first aid and trauma kits because those are so important, literally life-saving, that I think we need to dispel a lot of the misinformation and fantasy out there in the gear community, especially the tactical side of the gear community that just spreads so much nonsense and just gives people the wrong expectation of what they can and can't do with their gear, especially without training, which most people in the gear community don't get, which is a really big issue. The number of people I see carrying decompression needles with no skill or training on how to use it is scary because they will inevitably kill someone if they use it wrong and they're very likely to do so. Uh, so it really warrants its own gear, even though it's not a tier, it'll be included in the playlist for this series. So if you have questions about tourniquets and chest seals and why it's not in this tier and it's in this one, don't worry, I'll answer that in that last video. I won't answer it in the specific tier. And so we'll go on from that by kind of going on to what is a tiered system? It should be easy to understand, but some people, especially my European audience, might not understand the English. A tiered system works like a pyramid, a tiered cake. I used to think about it kind of like a Russian nesting doll system where you stack everything up. You start with a foundation and then you build on top of it. And at a certain level, you have that level's worth of gear and everything that came before it. So at tier three, we have our tier three gear plus tier two plus tier one. You expand or contract based on what you need. You don't have a different bag for every little thing. That's the beauty of a tiered system. You have one good gear setup that you actually carry, actually use. Not five, six bags of crappy gear because you had to spread out your money through all these different kits that are sitting in your basement, the trunk of your car. These things aren't useful if they're not actually with you. The one exception will be tier five, our emergency bag. That is something we leave at home. That is something we leave in our car uh, that we don't carry on us. But from tier one to tier four, the stuff we're actually going to use. And there's a reason why tier five is the exception to the tier philosophy, uh, just because it's so important, especially nowadays, to have an emergency bag, which is tier five. Now with my tiers, again, I have five layers. We start with tier one, that is clothing. That's the basis for everything. You choose the wrong clothes, it's gonna make your life a, a living nightmare. It's gonna suck because if you don't have pockets, it's kinda hard to put stuff in the pockets. If you're not dressed for the weather, you're gonna be too hot, too cold. Uh, if you're uncomfortable, you're likely not going to bring any gear at all because we always prioritize comfort. We don't embrace the suck, so to speak. And so that is something where clothing is really important. We get up and we get dressed every day. We think it's common sense, but if we just put a little bit more effort into it, a little bit more thought, we can develop new habits to where we can make our clothing work for us instead of just be form We'll think about function. I'm very big on utilitarianism and not just looking pretty. You want to be able to look pretty and be able to do some cool stuff. So we'll talk about some things that are fashionable and useful as well as just things that are just straight up useful. And then we'll go on to tier two. That is our on-body EDC, the stuff we actually put in our pockets. These are our mission critical items that we want to make sure are with us. And the best way to do that is to make sure they're physically on our body, not in a bag which is our next tier, tier three, off-body EDC, our everyday carry items that can be in a purse, a man bag or whatever, because they're not important. We don't necessarily care if it gets stolen or lost because it doesn't have our money in it, our phone or anything like that. It just has the extra quality of life stuff that is great to have, but we don't need it. It'll suck if it disappears, but we're not gonna cry about it. It's not gonna ruin our life or lead to identity theft or anything like that. Then we move on to carrying even more gear with tier four, our activity bag. These are bags built for a specific task. Diaper bags, gym bags, school bags, hiking bags. These may seem all very, very different, but they have the same core principles and things you wanna think about when assembling the gear, choosing the kind of bag and stuff like that. Then we have a special kind 
of activity bag, our emergency bag that is tier five. It gets its own tier because it's so important, so involved, and an exception to the tiered system philosophy. We're not always gonna have our emergency bag directly on our body, like we will everything else in our system as we expand it, but it's something that we always wanna keep within walking distance of us because if emergency happens, we really wanna make sure we have a way to address the emergency. We're not just running around with our heads cut off. Now, one of the most important things, no matter what tier you're at, no matter uh, how you approach gear, you wanna make sure you keep it personal. Think about when I'm showing you examples of gear, is it relevant to you? Is it legal to carry? Is it in your budget? You know, could you buy something better? Uh, maybe you have something that's about you that's different from me. I have larger than average hands, for example. So I carry some large folders, things like the SOG CLXR, the uh, Benchmade Adamus, that for some people are just way too heavy, way too big. It doesn't make sense for them. So I want you to keep it personal and remember, I'm not telling you what to do, what to buy. I'm just giving you the methods, the tools you go ahead and take that and do it with it what you need, what you uh, are really gonna use and focus on. Don't just copy and paste what I'm doing. Don't just buy what I have. And if you need help with doing that and keeping it personal, feel free to ask. We're the gear community for a reason. We're a community. We're all together in this. We can help answer your questions. I can, people in my comment section can, other content creators that watch my videos can. I've got small guys, big guys, guys that are new, people that are around for a while, we'll be able to help you out. So if, for example, with knives, that's my specialty, outdoors and knives. Uh, if you see something that's not legal for you, just ask, we'll help you find something that is legal. If something's too big or too expensive, we'll help find something that works for you. You don't need to feel like, oh crap, this is out of my budget, I might as well just give up. Don't, just ask, we will help you out. Uh, and so we'll do our best to do that. I try to stay on top of my comments. So please feel free to ask questions, or if you have suggestions, please do that as well. This series is directly influenced by the comments I got on last year's series. Some of you guys suggested some cool stuff I didn't know about, or some things that I thought about but didn't want to try because I didn't feel it was important. I tried it and I loved it. Uh, so if you got something to add to the conversation, please do that as well. I just want to make sure we're all comfortable with the dialogue and we all remember to keep it personal to our own lives. Never copy and paste what you see on the internet, especially since a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. And sometimes that also includes me. I make mistakes sometimes. Please feel free to point those out as well. Uh, I like learning from my mistakes. I'm not one of these guys that just gets mad when you point out something I messed up. All right. And so we're gonna go on from this and do video on each subsequent tier. We'll talk about things in a little bit more detail from here on in. Again, if you have questions, get a hold of me in the comment section. I have my Instagram in the description as well. That's another great way to get a hold of me. I do also have my email in the description, but I only check that about once a week just because I get so much spam from sponsorships and things like that. I always usually reject them, it's annoying. Uh, so I don't check it very often. The best way to get a hold of me is the comment section or directly on Instagram. Uh, if you're on Instagram, I post a lot of pictures about knives, nature stuff, some philosophy and you know political stuff. Uh, not like angry political stuff, just kind of neutral uh, and to get people thinking. I'm not a lefty or a righty. Uh, so that's kind of stuff you can expect if you want to subscribe to me on there, uh, just as a heads up. So we'll get into this. I hope you guys stay safe, stay informed. Please remember to tell someone you love them, smile, be a nice person. The world's on fire right now. A little bit of kindness can go a really long way. If your parents are involved in your life, please just give them a call, tell them hi. Hey, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whatever. Love you, appreciate you, thank you for all you do. You can really do a lot of good if you just take a little bit of time out of your day to go do it. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Toodles.